Hi everyone! Today I'm going to teach you how to checkmate with a king, a rook versus a king. Okay? Um, so, first things first. There are two important things you need to know. First, the checkmate is going to look something like that. So, kings facing each other. So, this way the white king is preventing the black king from escaping. And the rook is going to... Why can I move? Okay, well, the rook is going to go up to a8, check the king sideways, and it's going to be checkmate, okay? So this is how checkmate will look like. The king is always, the, the opponent's king is always in the edge of the board. And the second thing is, as, as you can see here, king and rook, they are working together, so they are a team. You cannot checkmate the black king here only with your rook, okay? You are going to need the help of the white king, okay? So, the big question is, if the black king is in the center of the board, how can you manage to, to bring the king to the edge of the board so you can checkmate it? Actually, it is pretty simple. So, uh, here you can play rook b4 because you already uh, start limiting the black king. You see that now it has only half of the board. And uh, supposing black moves to d5, this is another very important position. It's like the same position here, kings facing each other, but they are in the middle of the board. And the thing is, whenever both kings are facing each other, it's time to bring a rook and check sideways, because this way you force the king to go backwards, okay? So supposing the king goes to c6, you want to keep the, the rook in this line, so move it as far as, as far away as you can from the black king. And, uh, well, random move by the black king. Here, for example, uh, you as white, you're hoping that the king will step in front of your king. So you're hoping it, that black will play king e6. And if that happens, you can push your rook to h6, therefore forcing the king to go backwards once more. And if the king uh, escapes to the other side of the board, what you have to do is to chase the black king with your king. So always hoping that he will eventually step in front of your king, okay? And when that happens, it's time to, time to bring the rook, check sideways, and force the king to go backwards once more. Oops. And uh, you see that this way now, the king has only two more ranks to go. And in the beginning, he was in the middle of the board. So this method works. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, for example, in this position here, what should you do? You don't want to be uh, the first one to step in front of the other king, so you have to wait for the black king to go in front of you. So, uh, what you have to do here is to do a waiting move. So, you're just going to bring the rook here to a6. Because now, if the king goes to c7, you can check it sideways, and the king is going to go to the 8th rank. And if he goes the other way, you're going to chase him with your king, okay? And it is pretty simple here. Again, kings are facing each other, time to check sideways. And, well, the first step is, has been accomplished because the king is now on the edge of the board. So, the end is near. <laughs> um, okay, so here again, you shouldn't play here. No, you have always to wait for the black king to go uh, in front of your king. So here you can just play rook to h7 to the other side of the board, hoping that he's going to play king f8. And um, I don't think he would play that. So and to try to escape, but then you can simply chase him with your king. And eventually he, yes. Now there is no choice but to play the king in front of king and now it's time to checkmate okay rook h8 and checkmate because again the king cannot go to a7 neither b7 nor c7 because the king here protects all these squares and of course a8 and c8 can't go there because it is the rook checking and it's checkmate so i hope that was uh clear that you understood my <laughs> my line of thinking and uh, Hope that helps you.